Saudações a todos! No vídeo de hoje, preparamos um combinado de atualizações, a fim de passarmos os principais pontos das últimas informações recebidas sobre os gigantes, arcas espaciais e situação na Terra interior. Na primeira parte, vamos falar sobre a situação dos gigantes, ou seja, sobre a última missão de JP relacionada ao despertar dos gigantes, e também sobre uma atualização da Helena a respeito desse tema que saiu em um vídeo na plataforma Rumble, mas não no YouTube. Na segunda parte, iremos falar de uma atualização sobre as arcas que a JP trouxe, que foi sua quinta missão à Arca do Atlântico. E por fim, na terceira parte, vamos falar os principais pontos das mais recentes atualizações do JP sobre uma civilização de nórdicos na Terra interior. JP, que continua a servir no exército dos Estados Unidos da América, fez parte de mais uma missão multinacional de 10 homens num templo subterrâneo, que foi acessado através de um portal localizado sob uma instalação militar na Flórida, Estados Unidos. Ele descreveu o templo que visitou como estando dentro de, uma, de um grande sistema de cavernas subterrâneas, e que consistia em quatro pilares de mármore branco, além dos quais havia um grande sarcófago. Chegando lá, a equipe de JP primeiro encontrou outra equipe de 10 homens que acessou o templo através de um portal subterrâneo no Brasil. A comunicação entre eles ocorreu em português e espanhol. Então, uma terceira equipe de 10 homens apareceu da África e os soldados se comunicaram em francês. Quando as três equipes se reuniram ao redor desse sarcófago, algo ou algum mecanismo tecnológico relacionado à gravidade do ambiente foi acionado. Tudo ficou extremamente leve e foi possível remover parcialmente a tampa do sarcófago. Dentro havia um gigante ruivo de aproximadamente 3,6 metros de altura, que estava morto e em estado de decomposição e com forte odor. Ele estava cercado por muitas joias consistentes com o status de um nobre ou rei. Nesse momento, os africanos começaram a fazer uma dança e cantar algo em seu idioma. Foi então que um distúrbio afetou o templo e sons foram ouvidos vindos do sarcófago e as equipes se retiraram. Depois de alguns minutos, a equipe de JP resolveu voltar ao sarcófago e o gigante e as joias haviam desaparecido. Nessa parte, chegamos ao impasse que queria comentar com vocês. Mas antes, vamos ver o comentário de JP no final desse vídeo sobre esse episódio com o gigante. Ok, so somehow this mission uh, led to the activation of this dead giant and he resuscitated somehow mm. and presumably he's now out and well, about. Well, he, he disappeared. Uh, I'm not going to say that he, well, yeah, we, we heard the lid come off. We heard a loud, low voice, but we did not see this giant alive. Okay. I just want to put that out there. I don't want people to think we're like this guy came from the dead and zombie or, you know, but whatever technology that temple has, I guess it has the capability um, maybe to turn back time or to change gravity and to somehow reactivate the cells or reactivate whoever is dead back to life. Tanto por informações do JP quanto de outros contatados de confiança, sabemos que os gigantes estão em processo de ativação ou de despertar. Mas nesse caso em específico não temos essa certeza. JP menciona que o distúrbio no templo afetou a gravidade, a tampa do sarcófago foi removida e foram ouvidos sons em tons graves, mas quando a equipe voltou ao local, nem o esqueleto do gigante nem as joias estavam mais lá. Ou seja, das duas uma, ou o gigante foi ressuscitado e teletransportado de lá juntamente com as joias, ou todo esse distúrbio ocorrido no sarcófago apenas se deveu ao teletransporte do esqueleto e das joias. Não foi visto nenhum gigante vivo pela equipe de JP. 
Agora, para complementar essa informação, gostaria de compartilhar com vocês um vídeo recente da Helena com o Dr. Sala, que não foi ao ar pelo YouTube, somente pelo Rumble. Nesse trecho, Helena nos explica o status atual da situação com os gigantes. Vamos ver. Well, I, I wanted to uh, go back to something that you were told by uh, Prince Ia, I think it was a year ago, uh, that he said that they were, when, when he had to leave after the Great Flood and he left on Nibiru and took with him people, he left seven of his scientists behind. Uh, the, well, seven chose to remain behind and they went into stasis chambers. And out of those, tw out, out of those 12, there were 12 altogether, and um, he said four of those stasis chambers, the giants in those stasis chambers, the sleeping Anunnaki scientists, that they, uh, four of those were, were found and killed. One, one of those was retrieved by the deep state or the Enlil faction, and that the other seven uh, were slept, kept, had been hidden and, and had been guarded. And now four out of those seven sleeping Anunnaki scientists who are giants or, you know, we're talking about avatar bodies, uh, four of those have uh, started started awakening. So I just wanted to know, do you, have you had an update from here about those awakening Anunnaki scientists, uh, those awakening giants? I mean, uh, anything you can share about uh, what they're doing or is this awakening process just uh, ongoing? The, the awakening process is ongoing. Uh, it's very still dangerous for these giants to uh, giants, at least, oh yes, to uh, to come out because uh, they could be harmed. It's still now the the deep state is starting to know where they are, and it's become more and more dangerous. So the, the awakening process is slowed down and on hold, and it needs really to be sure that it won't risk anything. Uh, these bodies are avatars. They are not the original bodies. You need to think that the Anunnaki, um, are, of course, from another world with a different pressure, gravity, magnetic field. So um, they can, they couldn't, they, they, they can come and breathe, but they need to transfer the consciousness into an avatar that is more uh, adapted to the, the, the conditions here on Earth. Uh, if they come, they will wear a space suit and they, they have this little tricorder that they wear, you know, but they, it's, they cannot live all the time like this. It's easier if they just have an avatar. So that's what these giants in stasis are. They are empty bodies waiting for a consciousness transfer in them. Um, and the deep state has been after them a lot because these bodies know how to work the technology in the arcs where they are or halls of records or any technology that is around them so but to work the technology you need not only the body but the consciousness and while it's empty bodies they cannot do anything with that so uh the it's a little bit postpone and slow down and see what happens but they it's gonna happen anyway so uh, my uh, my update is uh, it's slowing down at the moment it's dangerous for them então pelo que foi possível entender por medidas de segurança contra os trevosos o processo de despertar dos gigantes está sendo postergado ou no mínimo a aliança irá segurar as informações sobre eles por enquanto Vamos ver como se desenrolará esse assunto. Esse foi a atualização sobre os gigantes que queria trazer para vocês. Agora, vamos falar um pouco sobre a missão de JP à Arca do Atlântico, sua quinta missão a essa arca localizada no Triângulo das Bermudas. Em meados de setembro de 2023, JP fez parte de uma missão conjunta para devolver uma joia de ativação retirada na, da Arca Espacial do Atlântico no início de julho. Ele descreveu como cinco extraterrestres nórdicos entregaram a joia à equipe de JP, depois que ela tinha sido devolvida por eles. 
quatro dos nórdicos juntaram-se à equipe de JP para descer a arca espacial a partir de um navio em forma de donut, ou rosquinha. Depois de ter sido retirada da arca espacial em julho, essa joia foi usada para ativar tecnologias ancestrais em todo o mundo, como por exemplo outras naves grandes e pequenas, outros repositórios de conhecimento e também algumas pessoas específicas. Mais uma vez, JP descreveu as profundas emoções de tristeza e felicidade criadas por essa joia, que afetaram todos da equipe, membros da equipe conjunta, incluindo os quatro nórdicos. Vamos ver o trecho em que JP relata sobre isso. Then it flexes out. So we get to the ark, we open it, and we point it to the other soldiers, the Nordics, to, to go first. And no, they hesitated and said, no, you guys go first. And they gave us the glass jewel. So when we grabbed the glass jewel, we felt the same sensation of feeling sad. And we were like, oh, man, here we go again. Um, two of the guys that were there with me went on the same mission when we took the jewel. So that one dude was there to put back the jewel that took out the jewel for the first time. So we were going through the chambers, the chambers of the um, uh, different type of boxes. Um, we passed the chamber where we see the writings, different writings. I saw something different that I hadn't seen. I saw another writing that was different. It was ancient as well, but I never seen it before. I just never looked at that location when we went there last times, those couple of times. So every time or every time we come down to the ark, we see something different. And you know, you always got to take notes of what you see to report back when you get back and finish you finish the mission. So we keep walking, you know, and we always have a NCIC in charge, you know, telling us what to do or, you know, where to follow and how to do things. And, and it's really structured, you know, you really can't touch anything. You, you really have to stay with a low, low voice just in case we hear something else. So the, the other soldiers, they, they kind of were doing the same thing that we were doing. So they were following us to the back, to the back of us. So we, we kept walking and we passed the, the chamber where we saw the fishes. Uh, the other four Nordic soldiers, they looked at it and they were amazed on the, on the floating orb water that was there with fishes that were glowing. So we passed that. And then we went to the chamber where we saw the statue that had the three eye statue that looked a little bit, uh, um, oriental. It looked like a Buddha, but not Buddha. It was like a, a Shiva. Buddha is a mixture of, of religions. It was quite interesting to see again. So we passed that and we got to the location where, where we needed to put the, the crystal. So we went one by one. We did like a, we did like a half circle and we told the guy that had the, the box. Um, we did not know how to open the box. So the, the, the other soldiers, they went, they went to the box and they opened it and they started um, taking out the jewel and you can see the tears in their eyes when they were handling these this jewel and everybody started tearing up it's a feeling that you get that it's like when when somebody takes something that's precious from you or when you lose a loved one um that you really love that's the feeling you get when you look at this particular jewel i guess the glass box was a protection It had a type of protection. I don't know what the glass, what type of glass it was, but you can still see through, but is their technology. So apparently they came from somewhere else in our solar system and they activated something else with this jewel. And also they activated something also in Europe, in England. There's one there. They activated something else somewhere in south africa do not know where but i heard africa we were told um in our briefing before coming down of the activations that th this particular jewel 
half. And, and then they told us that each each of these arcs, they have a particular jewel, similar jewel that activates different things in their region where they're at. But the one in Atlantic, they activated something out in our solar system. So they needed it. So they brought it back and my friend, he took the jewel. He was bawling. He was like, man, don't look at me. <laughs> so we were like laughing and just bawling at the same time because we felt like a sense of peace, but it was like a sad, it, it's, it's a sensation that comes back if you even think about it, you know? So they took the jewel and they started putting it back and it locked in place and it started glowing and the arc started freaking shaking. So I, I said, hey, we got to get the hell out of here. I did not feel that we needed to be there any longer. I said, we need to leave this jewel alone and get the hell out of here. So they agreed. Uh, we started going back. When we started going back, we passed the chamber where the fishes are at. And the fishes were all on the floor with the, with the liquid just flapping. It looked like the gravity stopped. Whatever was holding the, the orb where the fishes were stopped. But it was coming on and off. So you could see the fish floating and then flapping and then floating, flapping. It was like trying to turn back on, but the ship was shaking. So we were looking at our watches and we were looking at a grid location and apparently the ship was moving a couple feet per, per minute. So I said, hey, we got to get the hell out of here and get on the elevator before the ship, you know, dislocates. We have to get out of here. So we started moving back. And the Nordics, they wanted to stay. So we're like, oh, shit, here we go again. Because, you know, something similar happened to us with the Mexicans, with the Aztec people that they were dancing and all that. Yeah, the, the, the very first Atlantic space arc mission, you said that, that the Aztec. Curia Mate. Um, yeah, when they started singing Curia Mate. Uh, so the Nordics stayed behind and our. Depois de completar essa missão, JP disse que a arca começou a se mover e foi separada do poço do elevador que a conectava ao navio rosquinha da superfície. Ele também foi informado de que essa arca iria usar a passagem do furacão Lee para subir ao espaço e se encontrar com outro objeto, muito provavelmente uma nave-mãe que já estava no nosso sistema solar próximo ao cinturão de asteroides, entre Ceres e Marte. Em informações recentes divulgadas pela Helena Danan, ela diz que essa arca se reuniu com uma nave mãe dos alteanos. Essa então foi a atualização sobre a quinta missão de JP, a Arca Espacial do Atlântico. No final desse vídeo, JP trouxe novamente uma mensagem em português para os brasileiros. Ele ficou muito contente com os comentários do vídeo passado. Vamos conferir. Friends? Oi, tudo bem? Brasil, amo muito vocês. Vocês é, nossa, vocês escrevem muito bonitinho para mim e amo seus comentários. Eu acho que no futuro a gente vai falar português, uh, falar, falar minhas experiências em Brasil para vocês entender. A gente sabe que em Cardos Novos tem um tipo de ativação, isso que vocês estão ligados. E fica com Deus, fica com a presença positiva e a gente está aí. Para todos. Agora vamos falar um pouco sobre a recente missão do JP à Terra Interior, especificamente a uma civilização de nórdicos. No início de outubro de 2023, JP fez parte de uma equipe de quatro soldados liderados por um oficial médico e viajaram para uma civilização subterrânea profunda, localizada sob uma importante base militar não revelada. Nessa atualização, JP descreve a viagem para uma grande base militar subterrânea onde ele e sua equipe entraram em um pequeno prédio com um elevador antigo que descia 16 andares. 
Já no nível inferior desse prédio, eles saíram e caminharam por um corredor com muitas salas cheias de pessoal trabalhando em terminais de computador e testemunharam várias pequenas naves em formas de disco. Eles então entraram em outro elevador maior, que parece ter sido construído por uma outra civilização, e que desceu rapidamente para o interior da Terra. Ao saírem desse elevador, foram recebidos pelos humanos de aparência nórdica, que falavam com um sotaque inglês refinado, e também se comunicavam telepaticamente com eles enquanto complementavam sua missão. Esse grupo de humanos de aparência nórdica que os saudaram, lhes deram acesso a uma coleção de livros ancestrais e também forneceram informações sobre tecnologia de extensão de vida, que foram recebidas pelo oficial médico. Vamos ver alguns detalhes dessa missão nas próprias palavras do JP. Cool. So, the door opened and it was a big, big cave system, like huge. So, the door opens and we walked two, three meters out and you see a big cavern system. I'll send you the pictures of how I saw this cavern system, how similar these pictures are. I'm going to send them to you. It was huge. It was beautiful. And it had like vegetation. It had a, a river that went through it. It was beautiful. You could smell the vegetation. It had like a citrus type of smell. And I was stuffed when I started coming down. And once I hit the air of this place that we entered, my stuffiness like went away. My eyes stopped itching. What about lighting? How could you see in down there? It was like a bluish lighting that was on the walls. Beautiful, beautiful, bright blue, like streaks of lights like on the cave systems, but it had buildings, but the buildings were ingrated like into the cave systems. And you could clearly see glass. They had glass in their windows and all that, but it was a type of meadowish looking, like if it was tinted windows and there were oval out type of windows. So it was quite interesting, the structure of the buildings that were there and then We kept walking and we met up with this group that was dressed in white and they were Nordic looking. They had long white hair and they had a lot of jewelry on them. And they said, follow us, follow us. They talked English really good, but they talked it like really calm and more from like England, but they talked it like really calm, like, hey, come with us. So we started going with them. The other soldiers that walked us down So it was a total of four of us. The other soldiers that took us down, they went back to the elevator and they just shot up back up. So we started walking with this guy and we saw a huge, huge dog. It was a type of Labrador mixed in with a, probably a Mastiff or something like that, but it was huge. It was probably, I'm like six foot. So it was probably like his head, like five ten. Like it was a huge dog. And the dog was also, his fur was white. And he had like whitish, beautiful eyes. You can see a couple of these type of dogs going around and up and down with different people dressed as white. They had um, their, their clothes was like dressed in linen, beautiful, beautiful clothes. And they brought us to this building that was ingrained into the cave system. And we went in there and the doctor said, hey, wait here. So he went in with the guy and he came out with these beautiful, beautiful metallic books. And when you lift them up, they turn into like not 3D, but like it was ingrained looking like 3D. So you could see different types of lettering on it. It was something that I saw similar in the arc, depending how you put the lighting on it, you can see different types of words, depending how you put the lighting in the shadow shows, you can see different types of words. So it was quite interesting, the books that we were receiving to take back upstairs. And 
he also gave us a type of medicine that they were working on. They were working on this type of medicine for longevity, for long life, uh, to help us live longer lives. So they were sharing this with our government. So I guess they they know the code of living long periods of time. And I was looking at the buildings and I could see similar to what is um, Sumerian letters on different buildings, uh, on the different white buildings that I was seeing. So it was really beautiful, really beautiful city. And you could see really far, but we could not go farther. But it was a beautiful place. And we received these books that we were going to take back upstairs to back to this place that we were supposed to bring it to. Outra interessante missão de JP, não é mesmo? Parece que ele e sua equipe estão se tornando uma espécie de emissários da superfície para com essas diferentes civilizações intraterrenas. Ainda nesse vídeo temos mais uma mensagem em português de JP. Vamos conferir. Sure, sure. I'm going to talk to Brazil. Brazil, tudo bem? A gente está em momentos muito, muito difíceis no mundo. A gente tem que pensar positivo, pensar um, certamente o que a gente tem que fazer para fazer tudo certinho. Brasil é muito especial para mim. Eu amo muito os brasileiros. E pronto, a gente e quisiera ver vocês, entendeu? Fazer falar com vocês. Aí já pronto, isso vai estar possível. Tá? Então esse foi o combinado de atualizações mais recentes sobre os gigantes, arcas espaciais e situação na Terra interior. Apesar de para muitos todas essas missões de JP parem serem pura fantasia e entretenimento, para quem acompanha todo o trabalho forense do Dr. Michael Sala desde há muito tempo atrás, inclusive nos mostrando todos os documentos, cachás e insígnias de JP pertencentes às forças militares dos Estados Unidos, sabemos que são relatos verdadeiros. E se a Aliança está conseguindo trazer essas informações ao público, é porque já conquistaram muito terreno na Guerra das Revelações. Continuamos na luta pela divulgação. Saudações a todos.